So Warwick is the founder of quantum geology. Warwick has over 25 years experience in exploration, working for both large and small scale mining companies. He took a break in 2005, a break, to join the army for five years and go to Afghanistan and Timor Leste. I'd call that duty more than a break, but um, so congratulations on that. In 2010, he started his own niche exploration company, Gold Exploration Australia, Proprietary Limited, which specialises in gold project generation. Over the past four years, Warwick and his fiance Cherie uh, have undertaken extensive research and development program to explore the possibility of successfully using artificial intelligence to identify gold deposits. This research phase has led to the development of a system that utilises a hybrid AI capability to analyse huge amounts of geological data. It then identifies and collates unique deposit signatures within that data. But to hear more about it, please welcome Warwick. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I just want to thank Tony and GSQ for, for this opportunity. Um, what got us going on this was looking at how much data we're creating all the time in exploration, but we seem to use just a, a very small amount of it all the time, and it was a recurring pattern. And so it just started as, let's see what we can do with this thing. Um, and we didn't start off in looking at AI, it was more looking at methods that could look at large amounts of data and we just sort of stumbled around and, um, and started into AI. I uh, just want to thank my beautiful fiance, Cherie. She's the geologist of the team. I'm just a, a prospector. Um, so she brings the, uh, the smarts to the team, I think. Now, what is AI? Um, we hear it all the time. It's, it's terribly misused. Uh, strong AI and, and super intelligence is what you see in movies. It's, it's nothing that exists, but it's talked about as if it does. So what we're really talking about is just narrow AI. And it's like Sue said before, if you'd asked AlphaGo, Google's Go playing machine to play poker, it would do nothing because it doesn't know it. It can only do a very tiny thing, and that's the same as what we're doing. So in artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence is just a catch name. It just covers a whole bunch of things that go on. I won't go into them because there's hundreds of them. We hear machine learning a lot. Uh, machine learning is good. I think in geology it's very limited um, because it, I don't think that it can sort of handle the chaos of geology at times. Um, then we go into deep learning. Uh, most of what we do is deep learning um, and it's like Unsupervised learning on steroids is the best way to sort of put it. So AI in geology. So we're not trying to replace geologists with robots, and I have been asked that probably 17 times now. Um, it's just a set of, of tools that look at data, and just like you would use a calculator, you punch some numbers into a calculator, and it gives you an answer. So we find that it, pr it provides you more information on your data. And it's really intelligence augmentation. It's giving the geoscientist more information on where you're going and what to look at, and maybe things from a slightly different perspective than what we normally look at things. Now, headlines like this is why AI has a really bad name. And this is where people start thinking, oh, they're trying to take my jobs or all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm not a big fan of, uh, of IBM Watson. I sort of think it's, it's not much better than your Google Home that you ask to play your music on and, and things like that. Very good marketing, but it leads to things like this. Now, this article written by June is really, is an interesting article but he's actually talking about something that doesn't exist because he's talking about an artificial intelligence at a super intelligence level that doesn't exist, probably won't exist. Um, and he's telling you how that, you know, it can't do things that geologists do. 
But to me, it doesn't matter because it's not applicable anyway because it doesn't exist. So it's sort of worried on the same vein of worrying about, you know, the overpopulation of Mars. It, you know, it's not a big deal. So with anything, data, garbage in, garbage out. With AI, you've also got to worry about the model. Is the model right for the data that we're using? And that's what we found is that certain types of AI or machine learning and, and deep learning are better for geological data than others. And so sort of goes into our research. So we've got four systems. The first one we call the, the prospector system, which gives you some targets to look at. We'll, it scans about 1,600 square kilometres at a time and will give you a number of targets within that area to go and look at. The Hunter system feeds off that. That will actually tell you where it wants samples from and you go out and get some samples, feed it back into the system and it starts narrowing down those areas for you. The data mining system is where we introduce your data, so previous exploration data or any data that, that's available. And then the targeting system, which I'll talk about uh, at the end, is where we get down into sort of drilling level or really close base sort of stuff. I'm only going to talk about targeting and prospector in this talk. So the prospector system is a hybrid artificial intelligence. We call it hybrid because it uses more than just one method. It actually uses a few methods and it collates them all down into a map, basically. Uh, analyzes large amounts of data and identifies deposit signatures. Now, these aren't signatures in the, the classic geological sense. These are just signatures what the system sees based on the stack of data that goes into it. So it's trained on economic gold deposits. We're not looking for just a deposit. We're looking for something that we can mine, something that we can go out and actually get. So a lot of machine learning, they love big data sets, but it's not necessarily really good data. As we've seen in the, you know, the deposit database set that you, you pull off QDEX, some of that data goes back to 1840, where some old guy was wandering along and he found a nugget and he called it a gold mine. But that gets entered into the system. And the way that I look at it, if I can't go to that area and ground truth it and say, yes, this is a deposit or something like that, it's not worth it. It's not just, it's crap data, excuse the French. So it can use up to 100 layers of data. Um, this is where the human side comes back into it in knowing what data to put into it and what not. Um, for instance, a lot of the Landsat, ASTA sort of things. If you're looking at a site like Gympie, where there's a whole town on top of it, that sort of data is not really helpful. Um, and so it's knowing what to put into it and what not to put into it. And like I said, it, it finds these unique signatures in the, as it sort of looks down through that data like a cookie cutter and looks at each layers of those data and then looks through that, so how magnetics might correspond to gravity, might correspond to radiometrics. So how do we know it works? So this was the first thing that it found, which is GIMPy. Um, that's actually two targets. Has this got a laser? No. Um, there's two targets over the, the town or the, the major part itself. Um, <laughs> so there, the boundary is about there. What that target is there, I don't really know, to be honest. Um, I was just happy that it found that part. Uh, in looking at the available data for GIMPy, there's some drilling down here and some drilling up here, but there wasn't a massive amount through there. So that was enough to, to make us go, this is actually fairly interesting. So we started doing a few more. So here's Ravenswood. Um, the system does score the targets, but I've actually taken the scoring off um, just because some of these areas are in other people's EPMs and, and things like that. So doesn't always hit right on it. My thoughts on that were, if you're in this, this sort of area, are you close enough to the actual mine that a good exploration person would find it? That one's not a bad one. Not a good one. Now, we ran Mount Isa because we were talking to a, a large company and they want to find copper. And so I just thought, 
let's just give it a run, see what happens. So uh, the mine lease there, and it shows that it, it got it pretty good, and we'll just zoom in there. Um, I think that's about as close as you could get it. And this is part of the downside of deep learning. Why did it do that? I don't know. Um, it's trained on gold data, uh, and yet it found Mount Isa. So we tried some, some stuff in Western Australia. We start to see this clustering pattern. This is the super pit. Uh, it's put a target in the pit, but we also get these clusters around it. Tropicana, you see a similar cluster. And Boddington, similar cluster. Now, this is trained on Queensland data, Queensland gold data, and yet it's working in Western Australia. Um, just another interesting, why is it so? I'll be honest, I don't know, but it's working. Now, some people say to us, oh, but you know, there's a lot of targets there, but what have we got in that one? Seven? You've got a one in seven chance of, of actually finding something, so I don't think that's too bad. Just a quick graphic to, to show you what it has found and the, the different styles of, of deposits in our, our testing so far. Kidston, Red Dome and Mount Carlton, it won't find. Um, here's what it gives us for Mount Carlton. It goes close, but it, I don't think that's close enough. Um, and there's a massive amount of targets around it. So it's something that, you know, we, we work on the targets that it doesn't find to see why and that's why we give it a little tune and, and start to change things. So go drill something, we get this a lot. So I'm also a director for Trap Rock Mining, so I'm gonna drill a target that the system has, has shown us in, in Trap Rock's ground, drill it out of my own pocket, so it's taking me up a fair amount of time to, to save the pennies to do that. And it's a nice little target, so we think that it's it's worthwhile drilling just to see that we can start taking it to that next level and seeing what the system is seeing. Um, it's two historical gold mines. Uh, Mountain Maid has been drilled by a Saracen. Uh, they didn't find anything. So we think that is a good place to start when someone else has drilled it and said that there's nothing there. Uh, if we can find something, that might be good. So the targeting system. So who has seen this photo before? Couple, yep. Target was considered to have low potential when it was, it was drilled from underground, it was only a 30 metre hole, but drilling found 7.5, and you've probably already read it, 3,500 ounces of gold. I looked at this, and I've got the database for, for where this came from, and I thought, can we do better? And we hear stories all the time about drilling the near misses, and then someone comes back later and, and finds it. So we started looking at it, we, we knew what we were doing. We tried some machine learning with it. Machine learning was still a bit iffy. Um, so we tried some deep learning on it, took a lot of data, which luckily we had from this particular mine, um, and we started to get pretty good. So it's just a suggestion. This, uh, these drills are from Mount Chalmers, just outside of Rockhampton. And it just gives you a hint as to when your drills go down, if the system thinks that it probably should be better than what it was, it just gives you the idea of maybe you should go back and have a look at it, have another look, re-log it. Just, this is where again the human comes into it. Why is it so? Why is it saying this? The data says that it should be better than it is. And we know geology is chaotic at times, but it's just a prompt to maybe go back and check it because you don't want to be the guy that said, no, there's nothing there and somebody else comes back and, and finds something. So we're looking at commercialising this. We actually got some investors uh, the other day. Up until now, our major investor has been Queensland University of Technology. They've been really great with us, uh, putting some money into the project and, and let us use their, their cool toys in their labs. Um, so we came up with Orfox. Uh, we had to find a name that we could trademark in the US, Canada and Australia as well as get the .com for and, and all that sort of stuff. So We really want to take a bit of the office work out of geology. 
and not the interpretation or not the intuition, but automate a lot of the processes that just take up time, mapping, things like that. And then we can add the tools into it. And we don't do any interpretation, we just then hand over the data, whether that's a report or some maps or, or whatever, depending on what the person wants or what the geoscientist wants, and then you can go through it. So the idea, spend more time in the field or spend more time in doing the interpretation on, on doing the good things. So we think you can explore quickly and more efficiently, save money, which is always a good one, and faster, smarter data. You know, we've got all this data out there, let's really start to use it, but not take up our time too much in doing it. So our team, Simon, has been really good in, uh, in guiding us. Um, sometimes we get a little bit too caught up in what we're doing and uh, it's good to have somebody that's on the outside sort of looking in, which is really good. Uh, Nicole's really good helping us with setting up databases and, and data. Uh, Alan is an amazing individual. He's been published six times and he hasn't finished his undergrad degree yet. Um, so he's a, a really good kid. I uh, just want to thank our partners, so QUT, Unearthed, uh, and the rest there have been really helpful in us. It's, it's been a, an interesting ride, and you know, we, we get a lot of stick from the, you know, the geological community in that, oh, you can't take the intuition out of geology, which is not what we're trying to do, but because people don't under, understand AI, they tend to put that onto you a little bit. Really want to thank Tony Knight and, uh, and Brad John, if he's here. Uh, for this opportunity and QUT again, because without QUT we wouldn't be here. So, thank you. Mm.